Hello and welcome to the E-Cubed Enterprise Endpoint Experts Podcast. I'm your co-host, Bill Burnett, and with me today is Amy Casto, our illustrious co-host. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Bill. And our guest today is Steve Hoskin. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. And you are, uh, tell us who you are, where, you're, where you work, and what you do. So I'm Steve Hosking. I work for Vigilant IT out of Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm a, a consultant where I run around and do various different technologies from Intune to SCCM to OS management and SQL. And you can change your title a little bit when you need to, as I understand it. That, that's correct. I, uh, we're a small company, so we fill many hats and many roles. So whether I'm a, a developer or a consultant or an engineer, it, it works when we need to. But there are limits. You can't go straight to accountant or lion tamer. No, no, no. They don't like me playing with the numbers. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Okay. And um, you are from Australia, which, as we were talking about before we started here, is not, just for our listeners, it is not at all like it is depicted in the movie Australia with Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman. So parts of Australia may well be like that. Yeah. But the majority of Australia, where you see the populace, is a little bit more modernised and much like what you see in America in the big cities. Okay, great, great. And you have a hobby of Legos. Yes. So, <laughs> that is awesome. There's a lot you can do with Legos. Have you yes. built the Millennium Falcon? No, no. The uh, Millennium Falcon is just a little bit too expensive for my tastes. Uh, it's... Uh, it, while it's expensive in, in America, in Australia, it's almost twice as expensive. Wow. So it's uh, just not worth the licensing costs. Right, right, right. Okay. And so what is this? Con I understand you're going to buy some Legos here at MMS in the Mall of America. Yes. What have you got in your so sights? What I've got lined up is the new roller coaster that Lego is releasing today, ironically. Um, and it's going to be available to allow you to have a fully functional roller coaster of where they move the pieces around and all automatic <clears> and <throat> motors and stuff. Wow, that sounds cool. It's just being released today? Yep. No, I'm worried. You won't get to the store on time. Okay. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just dive in here. Today we are talking about ICB. No, I always do that backwards because when I was in school, they taught us about ICBMs, which is not what we're talking about today. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about <clears throat> the uh, internet-based cloud management. Is that right? Yes, okay. internet-based cloud management. Versus the cloud management gateway. That's correct. So maybe you can start by giving us like a high-level sense of... What is the history of these and sort of what, where did it start? What was the need? Yep. What's the evolution of the technologies? Okay. So internet-based client management is the ability to install and manage your SCCM clients outside of your network. So it started out, I would say with 2003, it may have been before that, where you had the ability to publish a um, endpoint in your DMZ and your clients could connect in and access and manage your devices. So it was for your road warriors, for people outside your network that need to be able to have their computers patched, applications installed, and along those lines. So that was the internet-based client management concept. That, over the last two to three years, has had a little bit of an evolution with current branch, where Microsoft's brought in the cloud management gateway, which is moving the requirement of having the server in your own DMZ and managing your own firewall and your ports and moving it up into Azure. And when it goes up into Azure, it sits in its own little bubble, little cocoon and goes, this is just for cloud management gateway. There's no network connected to it. It is a direct call between the SCCM primary server and the cloud management gateway. Okay, so now <clears throat> be very curious to hear what it takes to set up each of these. Yep. Um, Amy, why don't you take us through questions that would pop up in your mind if you were 
coming at this new and saying, hey, what the heck? What, what do I need to do to make this work? Yeah, so the questions that I get asked a lot on Twitter, and just to clarify, certainly I was a config manager admin before working for Adaptiva, so often the environments that I would work in, things were already set up for me, so I didn't really have that opportunity to um, set something up from scratch. So when I get asked questions like this, it's always, well, what are the requirements, first of all? So the requirements for both the internet-based client management and cloud management gateway is a HTTPS management point and distribution point. If you don't have that in your environment today, look at it. PKI is not as scary as it sounds. It's, it's just certificates. But if you don't have that today and you want to go to Cloud Management Gateway to manage your devices outside your environment, you need to have all of your clients recall in to your environment under HTTPS. So you end up with duplicates in your environment and it's, it's an adventure setting these sorts of things up. So always plan when you're making these changes that it should be as secure as possible as that's where Microsoft's moving with that technology to make sure that nobody can intercept that traffic. Sure, is there an additional license needed? No with the little asterisks up the top. <laughs> There's no additional <laughs> license required. But if you're going to be using the cloud management gateway, you need to pay for not only the virtual machine that gets created up in Azure as well as the cloud service object, but the ingress and egress, oh, sorry, the egress of data out of Azure. Because Azure, it's, it's for a profit environment. So of course we're going to have to pay for it. So that's, that's the only additional cost going down the cloud management gateway. If you are using internet-based client management, this is where you're using your own DMZ and typically you've got a license for Windows before you go down that path. Sure, what about role-based access? So I don't want my junior admins that have access to the Config Manager console to be able to look at any of that. So this falls into this typical SCCM role-based access for site services where you can say, well, you have the ability to view this, but you can't touch anything. You can't make any changes. You can't scale it out. And Microsoft's been quite good in, at that level of configuration to say role-based is very important. There is going to be your admins that have to have that uh, infrastructure layer admin for SCCM compared to your application packages who they don't need to know about how that works. Okay. So you mentioned certificates. Can I make my own certificate or should I actually pay for a certificate? So, <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I would recommend and how we implement certificate management for SCCM for both internet-based client management and internal parts of Cloud Management Gateway is utilizing your internal PKI infrastructure. So an internal certificate authority from Microsoft, um, just a, a server, uh, and that handles all of the certificates internally. You can manage those certificates out to the client computers. When going to the cloud management gateway, there is a requirement for an externally, uh, ex no, you can use internal certs. Um, for cloud management gateway, you need to, you can't use wildcard certificates. You can't use a whole heap of different things because it needs to be a fully named instance. There are changes coming through at the moment where PKI is becoming less important for these things, but it's always still going to have some sort of certificate requirement. Okay, let's say that we decided um, that we didn't want it anymore. Can we just turn it off? So. Yes, you can, and what that will mean is you will have orphan devices not reporting it because they know that that exists there and you can go and have that communication channel. Once those devices come inside your network, then you have the ability to sit there and they've, they've picked up the new policy to say, well, you're no longer internet-based, whether it's cloud management gateway or whether it's a, a traditional internet-based client management. Where it becomes an issue is for those devices that don't come back onto your network. So in our environment, we have a multi-tenanted SCCM environment where all of the servers that are communicating to our SCCM exist on customer sites and 
the only way that communication can occur is through that internet-based client management. If a um, client on the road connects to my CMG or my, I don't know, another client that's on the road and mm -hmm. they're sharing peer-to-peer -peer because it's two people that went to the same office, are they going to spread viruses? Not likely because it won't be spread via the channel of SCCM. Obviously, if they're unprotected computers or they don't have firewalls on those devices, they could spread viruses between themselves, but not through the cloud management gateway because it's all secure and we don't have the ability to go, or we should not have the ability to go in and modify things on that server. Um, you can go and log on to that server in Azure for troubleshooting, but by default that's all turned off and you don't have the ability to sign in there and access that server. So from a security point of view, it's, it's just this little black box that sits out here that communicates back to your on-premises management point. So from a, a peer caching point of view, it doesn't really utilize that in the cloud management world. Okay. Should I be worried if my organization isn't allowed to send telemetry data to Microsoft and I'm using a CMG? If you're not able to send telemetry to Microsoft, I would assume you don't have the ability to access Azure to create those resources for cloud management gateway. <clears throat> okay. So you have to use telemetry? Well, I haven't gone to the extent to investigate whether you need it or not, but most organizations that don't want to send out telemetry also don't want to go to the cloud because right. it's, it's around the security <clears throat> profile of, well, we don't trust External the same products. things that would make you wary of sending out telemetry would make you wary of moving to the cloud mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. And, and that's my opinion on that. That may not be the truth, but that's how I would see it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you passed the test. You got all the answers correct. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Go get the job. Amy, being a world expert on this subject, was simply just peppering him to make sure he knew what mm -hmm, he was talking mm -hmm. about. I hope that you were <laughs> adequately nervous and didn't worry about the exam. But of course. You are now certified. Yay. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I have a question. What is all this about Tim Tams? So, in Australia, we have a product called Tim Tams, which is chocolate biscuits that are quite yummy. Mm -hmm. And what we don't realize in Australia is they're not readily available anywhere else. In the yeah, world. I had never heard of it. You're all Tim Tams and uh, I'm like, tell me more. So they're a very nice uh, biscuit or cookie covered in chocolate with a thin layer of uh, creamy filling in the middle. And they do all different flavors. So we have caramel flavors, we have white chocolate, we have coffee. Uh, we have just chocolate or double chocolate. It's this sounds great. So yes, and you typically travel with extra Tim Tams because you like to share your your country's unique food item with people who are interested. Yes. And so that, oh. when I come to conferences and events and things like this, I make a point of bringing extra Tim Tams because I find that quite a lot of the IT professionals have a sweet tooth and like to trade chocolates and sweets. Uh, it's why I don't bring Vegemite though, because... <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine why, that's unpopular. Yeah, that, that's more the gag gift of, oh yeah, 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 you put it on a spoon and eat it just normally. <laughs> that's how we all eat it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes, have fun with the Americans there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes indeed. Well, fabulous, and you're going to bring us some of these Tim Tams. Which I am. I thank you in advance for, as does Amy. I'm sure they are very yummy and I'll bring some down for you. Do we have a would you rather for? We do. I need to get some information from you first. How much do you know about kangaroos? I know enough to not pet them. Okay. Because they are not fun if they come and chase after you. And so they, they're pretty they quick, huh? Fences. Yes. Okay. So I grew up on a farm and mm -hmm. one of the most frustrating things about kangaroos is they just go straight through the fence and take the wires with them and you've got to go and fix the whole fence. That sounds an awful lot like owning a horse as well. So yes. 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 Interesting. Okay, so would you rather jump as fast and as high as a kangaroo or yeah. hold your breath and swim around like a whale? Swim. 
100% spin them around like a whale. It's more fun. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right. There you have it. Thank you so much for joining us, Steve, and have a great rest of MMS. Thank you very much, Bill. Uh,